Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and this is part three of our video series celebrating the launch of Team Yankee, the West Germans. In our two previous videos, we looked at building some modular terrain to prepare for the launch of the new Team Yankee West Germans book. First, we used the excellent model, the Mechanics Workshop, and souped it up and turned it into something a little different. Then we added a helicopter landing pad, and now we're moving on to use the Battlefield in a Box factory building to prepare an administrative building or a command center for our helipad. If you haven't seen the previous video, you can find it right here. So, with all that out of the way, let's get to work. Going back and consulting my original plan for the project, I see that it's time to move on to work on the administration building. Checking the dimensions I had ruled out, it's going to be 9 inches wide by 5 inches deep. So I go ahead, get out my foam core, measure it out, and go ahead and cut it out. From here, I lay out the other pieces of the project as I have them planned, and use this to match up the grid work for how the stone pavers are going to go on the base. I then go in and use my pen to score out the shape of the pavers, and after that's done, go back and mark in some chips and scratches, various cracks into the surface to establish some visual interest. Now I proceed exactly as I did for the mechanic shop, and I use my pin vise to drill holes in the base of the building at diagonally opposite points. I then press some paper clips through the holes and punch them down all the way through the bottom of the base. Then getting out a pair of sprue cutters, I cut them off flush with the top of the inside of the building, and using my hot glue, glue the pegs into the surface of the base so they can help root the building in place when the time comes to install it. Moving on to the building, I wanted to establish more that it was a military command center than, say, a factory, which it was originally designed to be. So I used my 3D printer, printed it out a radio tower, and also a radar dome. I found the files on Thingiverse. Taking some Super glue, I glued them into place on the roof of the building. I could now start painting. I got out my airbrush and some Panzer Dark Gray and sprayed down the entire building. Then I went on and mixed a 50 50 mix of the same Panzer Dark Gray and Vallejo Light Gray and went back over the building focusing on the areas where the light would be hitting it more directly. I followed up with a quick dry brush of pure white to add a final highlight. The roof itself was heavily textured, so that lent itself to a dry brushing as well. I changed out the color a little bit and used sort of a beige-ish off-white, just to increase the variety. While I was working on the roof, I got out a silver weathering pencil and colored over the vent covers. At this point, it was time to switch to painting windows. And this is also when I realized maybe I had bitten off more than I could chew. I took out my deck tan to paint in the window frames, and I realized that there's no less than 72 panes of glass on this model. That's a lot of glass to paint. But I had already committed, so I really couldn't do anything else. I just took my time and forged ahead. With the frames painted, then I took out some dark blue, painted in the glass itself, and then worked my way up through successively lighter colors of blue, until I put a couple dots of blue-gray on to imply glints on the windows and reflections. And yes, 
This took a long time. A very long time. With the windows finally done, it was now time to start doing some chipping. I took out some light blue gray and painted dots and scratches at various spots all around the walls of the building, and then carefully put some German gray in the middle to imply some depth. I then repeated the process on the doors and the deck tan areas using dark sand and hull red. It was now about time to start looking to build some visual interest, so I went ahead to put some decals on the building. But there's a bit of an issue. The material the building is made out of is very coarse, and it would be hard to attach a transfer to the building directly. So I started by putting down a layer of gloss varnish. Then once the varnish had dried, I slid the decals on top of that, and then painted over them with some decal medium. This helps them conform to irregular surfaces underneath. After doing that, you have to leave it to dry for a while, so I just left it alone. When the decals had dried, I decided the next step should probably be shading, so I sprayed the whole model down with a couple coats of satin varnish, and then went in and took out my dark shader enamel. This is a dark brown enamel wash that I then loaded onto a fine brush, and deposited with capillary action into the gaps and crevices of the model, anywhere where it would serve a purpose to darken the model and imply there was a shadow there. At this point in time, the model was starting to look really good, but it still needed some wear and tear, so I went on to weathering it. I started by using an oil brusher. This is a dark brown oil paint that can just be brushed on as streaks. I put some of that on, and I also put some of my traditional rust enamels on, dotting them over top of the chips and drawing out streaks on the face of the building. Once I had put some of this on, I then took out some white spirits and blended it out using a moist brush. The majority of the paintwork was now done on the building, so I could go ahead and mount it on the base. I took out some Mod Podge and brushed it heavily across the bottom of the building, then pressed the building down over the pins I'd already installed in the base to hold it securely. I went back and put a little more Mod Podge around the sides of the building and sprinkled it with some sand and kitty litter mixture just to cover up the edges. After all this was put down, I put some heavy bottles on top of the building to hold it flat and I left the glue to dry overnight. The next morning all the adhesives were dried and the building was stuck down to the base, so I took out some masking tape and went in and masked around the edge of the building. Next I got out some tan acrylic paint and heavily dry brushed it over the base, followed by a dry brush of light gray, and then finally a light dry brush of white. With the colors on the base now well in hand, I decided it was time to put in the final added little details. I got out some strips of basswood, a few 55 gallon drums I had 3D printed, and a couple extra crates, and went in and installed them around the edge of the model. At this time I also put down some stray lichens, and even glued a vine to the back of the building. Once all the glue had set, I went in and painted the details appropriate colors, green for the barrels and brown for the wood and the crates. Now came time to weather the base itself, so I laid the base down beside the existing pieces of terrain and matched them up so that the lines on the pavers matched, then getting out my dry pigments in shades of brown, ochre, and dust colors. I worked them into the base. After I had put these down and was satisfied that the bases were blended to look like they all matched together, I then got out my dark wash and went and lined in the spaces around the pavers. Once the dark wash had set, all I really needed to do now 
was give the whole model a couple coats of matte varnish to take away the shine from some of the different paints I had used, and to also protect it from some wear and tear. Lastly, I went back to the windows and painted in every single one with some gloss varnish. And with that, this part of the project was done. With the completion of this piece, my West German spread was quickly expanding. Now I had an administration building, or perhaps a command center, to go with my helicopter pad. And with the addition of plenty of little details, it certainly helped reinforce the scale of the spread and to indicate that it was an area with lots of activity. That's it for this episode, but don't worry, there's still one more to go in our terrain series celebrating the launch of Team Yankee West Germans. In the next video, I'm going to build a helicopter hangar completely from scratch. And of course, we're also going to cover the reveal of the whole spread. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.